Hello everyone and welcome to 4 Teachers. In today's video I am going to be answering all of your questions about teaching in an international school in Hong Kong. I am going to discuss the reasons why I decided to move to Hong Kong, the curriculum that I teach living out here, the differences between teaching in Hong Kong and the UK, and I'm even going to touch on the wage that I receive as a school teacher working here in Hong Kong. I am also excited to share that today's video is in collaboration with Thomas Blakemore. If you are unfamiliar with Thomas's channel, he also makes incredibly useful videos all about teaching. His videos are centered around his life working as an international school teacher in Dubai, so if you would like to head over to his channel he will be posting his answers to these questions focusing on life as a teacher in Dubai and if you are considering teaching abroad in the future I hope that these videos might give you some ideas and some clarity about where might be the right place for you. Question number one what made you choose to teach in Hong Kong? I always knew as a teacher that I wanted to try teaching abroad at some point I wasn't sure when it was going to happen but after I had been teaching for a couple of years in the UK I decided that it might be a really good idea to apply to some countries abroad. At the time I was working in Manchester with a girl who was from Hong Kong and she advised working there and said it would be a really good opportunity. I actually applied to stay in Hong Kong for two years and to teach here for two years but I'm now on four and it's rolling into five. So in the end, something that I set out to do for just a couple of years of my life has turned into quite a sizable chunk of my teaching career, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So for me personally, moving to Hong Kong to teach was a very, very good decision. Question number two, what curriculum do you teach? I teach the PYPIB curriculum. This curriculum was not the same curriculum that I was teaching in the UK, so I did have to learn quite a few new things in order to adapt my teaching style to suit this particular curriculum. However, the schools that I have worked in have provided lots of good training courses to help prepare me for teaching this curriculum. And if you are wondering, I didn't need prior experience of teaching this curriculum before applying for my job. I just needed to show willing to learn and show that I'd done a little bit of research and just found out a little bit about the curriculum before applying. So if you are only familiar with teaching the curriculum from your home country, you should still be able to apply for a teaching job abroad, as long as you are willing to put some time and effort into getting your head around the curriculum that you will be teaching. Question three is, which lessons do you personally teach? Something that I found really different when I started working in an international school is that as the class teacher, you are not always expected to teach all of the lessons. My experience of teaching in the UK was that I taught everything. So I taught the maths, science, art, music, PE, all of the different subjects were taught by me as the class teacher. However, you might find that in some international schools, some of the subjects are taught by specialist teachers. For example, there is a PE teacher that will take your class for their PE slot. There may also be specialist teachers for art, computing, library. As well as that, if your students are learning multiple languages, for example, my students have Chinese classes and English classes, you will not be expected to partake in the Chinese classes. I do find that on the whole this does help my work-life balance a bit as a primary school teacher but at the same time I do miss teaching lessons like art and PE sometimes. For example if art is being taught by a specialist teacher then you don't really need to put art classes into your day-to-day -day timetable. However of course there's nothing stopping you from still bringing some of those skills into your lessons so if you are someone who is passionate about a certain subject you can still find ways to blend it into your day-to-day -day timetable. Question number four is in what way is your Hong Kong school different to your UK school? Uh, my Hong Kong school is really, really, really big. There are seven classes per year and the building that I teach in at the moment is absolutely huge. So that's different to the UK school that I worked in, which was a much smaller school. One of the main things that I have noticed about teaching in Hong Kong is that there are teachers from all around the world working in the same school. I have been lucky enough to learn some tips and tricks from teachers that have taught all around the world. And I think that's definitely something that I really, really enjoy about teaching internationally. All of the different ideas that people share, all of the different stories and the experiences that people have to bring to the school is really amazing as well. Another big difference that there is specifically for working in Hong Kong is that there are a lot of public holidays that I wouldn't celebrate in the UK that I do get the opportunity to celebrate working in Hong Kong. Some of these public holidays include the Dragon Boat Festival, the Mid-Autumn Festival and even celebrating Buddha's birthday which is really really special for me to celebrate too while living out here. Question number five is 
Why would you recommend teaching in Hong Kong or teaching abroad? For Hong Kong in particular, I just had to pause the camera and put the aircon on because it is really, really hot in Hong Kong. I wasn't really aware quite how hot and humid Hong Kong would be. But on the other hand, the hot weather is really amazing as well because I didn't realise that Hong Kong had so many amazing beaches that you could visit, as well as many amazing different islands that you can visit for day trips. There is always something to do living in Hong Kong and I never feel bored. I always feel like there's a new adventure I can go on or a new place that I can go to explore. Hong Kong's location also makes for really easy travel opportunities to different countries. You're only a couple of hours away from Vietnam, you're about four hours away from Japan, you're close to Cambodia and Taiwan and not too far from South Korea and you're only a five hour flight away from Bali as well. So I find that I've had loads of incredible travel opportunities as a result of choosing to live in Hong Kong. What is your accommodation like? Did your school help to find it? The accommodation in Hong Kong is known for being really quite expensive. I was definitely a little bit shocked when I first got here and realised how much my accommodation was going to cost me. There are lots of ways to make it cheaper, for example living further away from the centre or living in accommodation that has a walk-up building rather than a lift that will take you to your floor. And of course, like most places, if you choose to live somewhere with an older building then it might be cheaper than a more modern building but I must admit it has been a little tricky adapting to living in such a tiny expensive place in Hong Kong however I do really really love my apartment it's really really nice I know I haven't shown much of my apartment in these videos but if you are interested or if it might be useful for somebody who is thinking of moving to Hong Kong please let me know and maybe I can make a video tour of the apartment and maybe I could make a video specifically focused on accommodation and finding a place to live in Hong Kong and the costs involved with that as well. I also just remembered that part of the question said did the school help me to find a place? I personally didn't use any advice from the school when finding a place to live because I did have a contact in Hong Kong who recommended an area and I think maybe recommended some buildings as well. However I do think that most international schools would be able to help you out by advising areas and prices and maybe estate agents as well. So there is no harm in asking your school for some recommendations. How does your wage compare with your UK wage? This is probably one of the most common questions that I get asked as an international school teacher. It's really, really difficult to answer questions about wage without giving too much personal information away about me and my school and the amount that my colleagues will get paid as well. So I'm not going to give you the specifics of what I earn as an individual. However, I will let you know that it is probably double, if not triple, what I was getting paid in the UK as a school teacher and most schools will give you an allowance towards your living accommodation as well which does make the wage very very desirable and I have managed to save quite a lot of money while living here. That being said Hong Kong is a very very expensive place to live so you will find that your rent and your groceries and just your day-to-day -day living costs will be a lot higher as well so that is kind of reflected in the wage that you are paid. I will show somewhere on the screen a guideline of an estimated amount that you might be paid as an international school teacher working in Hong Kong but please remember that all schools will have their own individual pay scale and you might be paid based on the amount of experience that you have as a teacher already but I really do respect and enjoy the amount that I am paid as a teacher working out here. Question number eight. How do people usually travel around Hong Kong? We are so lucky here in Hong Kong to have such an incredible travel system called the MTR which is an underground train system although some of the trains do run above ground as well. It's really really efficient, it's really really fast, it's really really cheap and it's also really really easy to understand and navigate. The MTR map is just really easy to read, it makes so much sense and I did find that as soon as I moved here I was able to wrap my head around the travel system really really quickly. As well as that Hong Kong has efficient buses and taxis and there are also old-fashioned trams called Ding Dings that run above ground. They're quite slow but they're really cheap and it's a a really nice way to sit and experience Hong Kong as you travel through the streets. In case you were wondering, not very many teachers in Hong Kong drive cars. It's actually really uncommon to have a car or a car parking space in Hong Kong. Because space is a premium out here in Hong Kong, it is quite uncommon to have a car. If you really wanted to get a car, I'm sure you could, but it is not very common to do so. And I would say that the transport links that are provided instead of a car are really efficient, so you might just not need one anyway. And that question 
question brings me to the end of this Q&A all about teaching in Hong Kong. If you have any more questions that I haven't answered in this video, please leave them down below in the comments and I will try my best to answer as many of those as I can. Be sure to pop over to Thomas Blakewell's channel to find out his answers to the same questions all about teaching in Dubai. And in order to help me and my channel out, please consider clicking the subscribe button which is under this video and also give the video a thumbs up, it really helps my channel to grow. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you again soon.